Good morning. Good morning. Morning. Good morning, viewers. It's 7 8 a.m. I'm Julian Skeet, and welcome back to the Tobago Updates Morning Show, coming to you here live from the Port Mall in Scarborough, Tobago. As we continue the conversation in this segment, we're talking about after Carnival. Uh, how was this season uh, with our visitors and persons coming to the island? And certainly this morning, we are chatting with Michael Frank, owner and operator of Frankie's Tours. And you know, this is also the start of November time of the tourist season. So, good morning to you, and welcome. Welcome. Good morning to all the viewers. Good morning to you, the whole of the listening public. All right. So as we get the conversation started this morning, you know, we want to bring some clarity and separation almost almost immediately. We heard in the media of the situation that took place out there on the seas, you know, between the, uh, the, the police and Frankie Tour. And generally, we know you're a man that's always focused on building and, and developing, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the aspect and the area as it relates to tourism. I want to bring some clarity for us in terms of what really um, transpired out there. So we show sure it's not a case that they're trying to take Frankie to jail. <laughs> 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 um, no, it is not a case. Um, there is a proposal on the table. Apparently, it's a high-level proposal that has been talked about in terms of having a new permit to operate on the reef. Um, this has not filtered down to us as yet. Um, I am not sure, the guys from Trinidad, what was the instruction. But when they get here, they decide to implement this. It was strange for us because we already we did not know anything about it um and we've been operating for so long they should have at least have some consultation with us anyhow they tried to stop the boat and of course we called in people from the maritime department and all the different sectors that i think would be responsible for that sector and they came about and they clarified the matter day and then um it delayed us for like a two three hours but we get going and everything went on um so in some regards, I think it was a little misunderstanding between the police and maybe their superiors. But lo and behold, everything went okay. Most and importantly. We went, back, yeah, we went back to normal just after that. We had a couple of meetings with the same police afterward and uh, we have more plans because this is something that they think that they want to implement very shortly. And we don't have a problem with that. I mean... Once it's doing the right thing, that is the real thing. So there was no long-term impact on those patrons or visitors to the island that just wanted to enjoy a good tour? Yeah, oh. there was no long-term. It was just, I think, a two hours and an hour, two and a half hours delay and everything went back to normal. All right. Uh, good, good to know in terms of providing that update for us. Now, the, the general season, uh, you know, and we, we're speaking to uh, this period that would have taken place for the Tobago October Carnival, that October period where we would have had visitors to the island, and then uh, more than that, the culmination on this weekend, the Tobago Carnival weekend. How has that season been for you and, you know, for those uh, in, in the industry as part of the spin-off uh, that we hope will normally happen, no matter what people come for, whether they come for Carnival, for jazz for heritage etc well i can't complain we had a busy season but overall i don't think it was that hectic because i'm just not judging from my point of view but from all the other boats and operation um most boats did not go out full on a constant basis and most of them did not even go out at all i mean the advantage that we have is that we are more recognized and we have a bigger craft and stuff like that so we tend to have a good season but I'm not just looking from my point of view, but I'm looking at that general idea. Generally, it wasn't 100% like we've seen before. There was a lot of people here, but they were here mainly for the carnival, mainly to party. And when they get to the beach, they mainly will sleep off the alcohol or something like that <laughs> and not really go on a boat. But some did. And thank God it was a pretty good season for us. All right. And how has it been in particular in terms of out at um, no man's land? I mean, that's a treasure and a gem for us. Um, and in more recent times, there have been that concern between the balance of actually being able to enjoy the wide expanse of no man's land, or, or in fact, not that wide, mm -hmm. but the narrow expanse of uh, no man's land and competing simultaneously with what appears to be a growing interest in terms of, um, you know, vending and building up uh, on the outside. How has that been um, in, in this space? All right. Well, the vending is continuing. Um, and I have realized now that people is actually coming to go to no man's land to eat. Um, I have people who is coming to me straight up and look, we don't want to go on any reef tour, we just want to go to no man's land. Spend the day there, eat, drink, lime, and come back. Um, it's a new trend that we notice adopting that people don't even want to go on the reef anymore, but they basically just want to go nylon pools and no man's land. That's it. 
or in some cases just Nylon Pool alone, or in other cases, No Man's Land alone. So it has been there and it has been very effective. I mean, there were more people on No Man's Land than actual reef over the carnival period. Very, very interesting indeed. Um, how do you see this trend <laughs> uh, working uh, in, in that direction, especially for, uh, you know, I'm looking at the collective here. Collective being those reef tour operators simultaneously, those vendors, etc., within the space. And more importantly, one of the concerns that people are, appear to have is the possibility of ensuring that we maintain that pristine, clean, you know, kind of um, and serene mm. space in terms of no man's land. Well, I think what really needs to be done is to have a general control of the situation. We don't want it expanding too wide and causing even a bigger problem. Um, if we can have it controlled, I think it should work because two, it employs people. Three, is that it's a nice place for people just to relax and have a nice chill out. And the fourth thing about it is that no man land is calm and it's safe. Over the carnival season, when the seasons are a little bit rough, no man land is a calm space. There's no waves, there's nothing. So it's nice for children, it's nice just for families to go there and relax. In terms of the boat doing business, it's not, a, it's, not a, it's not an expensive trip to go to No Man's Land. Mm -hmm. It costs maybe 50 TT to go and return. You understand? So um, it doesn't generate a lot of money per se in terms of the boat. But if you have a big group, well, of course, it's beneficial. All right. Uh, what would what would you say in terms of uh, from the from the perspective and we're looking at the broader aspect here, the association coming together and providing that level of support, coordinated efforts, especially going into the tourism um, season that we're in. How what are the hopes and the and the prospects in that direction? Uh, tour operators, you know, starting to see those bookings coming in, going into November. I know the November, December is one of the times people looking to leave yeah. out there yeah. um, in the cool, depending on where you're from to kind of come to vacation uh, in the Caribbean and specifically in Tobago. How, how has that been looking so far with our, our potential visitors to the island? Well, for us, we're doing pretty well. Uh, we have a lot of bookings for the whole uh, November, December, January, all the way back to Carnival already. We have so much bookings already for Carnival next year, that is surprisingly. <laughs> we have a new boat coming on stream and I don't think if that boat does not come on stream, we will not be able to deal with the volume of people already booked for Carnival next year. Um, and it's the same for the end of the year, like, like from maybe from the 28th all the way back down to the 1st of January. It's pretty busy already. And yeah. I, I want you to share with persons as well, you know, because we, we listen to this from the tourist perspective. And I've had the opportunity personally to recognize that even from the standpoint as locals, it's an excellent opportunity to take a tour with Frankie's tour uh, because people seem to think that the caterings are only to tourists. Tell us a little bit because I know you interact even with local groups to give that kind of exposure, whether young, middle-aged or seniors who say I haven't been out here in years. Uh, tell us a little bit about that in terms of giving that exposure even right here to those of us in Tobago to be able to sell the product ourselves. Well, to be honest with you, I think we have a larger majority of local people going on tour than foreigners. In fact, there are more local people on the boats every day than you can find internationally. In fact, there are very few international people. So the 90% of our business is actually local. People from right here, Trinidad and Tobago, you have a lot of school groups, you have a lot of church groups, Excellent. you have a lot of people who just want to go and have a line. Then you have, don't talk about the birthday people and the people who just want to go out and have a little celebration. That is a constant flow. And um, what's, what's the quality of the reef like now? I know we had said because of that slowdown period for the two years, it really allowed it to rejuvenate. Yeah. And so tell us as well about the quality of life out there on the, on the reef. It has definitely rejuvenated, definitely, in many cases. But look, the spin to this is mm. that the people is coming to go there and have their birthday on the line. They're not really interested in the reef. They're not. People who are interested in the reef are the people who are more environmentally friendly, who want to go snorkeling and all that. But I would say about 85% of the people who go on the reef now not even interested in going over the corals. They just want to do two things. Nylon pools, no man's land. They are there for the lime. They are there to swim and they are there to enjoy the clear waters and the calm waters. They have no interest in... <laughs> I'm sorry to say, but they have actually no interest in the environmental sector or at looking at fishes or corals or even learning anything about it. I mean, we will encourage, especially school groups, to go over the reef and we will tell them a little bit about what they can see in the marine space. But the general public, I'm saying 85% of them, has absolutely no interest in going over the reef. So does that mean ultimately now that um, these tour operators and so now need to revisit 
um, the packages that you may do <laughs> in an effort for um, you know promoting and selling to be Goa and, and that aspect of the of the whole marine park and so on in 2023 because it's a different kind of audience now well we already did that we already realized that um the market is not just to go over the reef but also the entertainment sector so this is something that's ongoing right now we have transformed for those who want to go and do the snorkeling and the sightseeing we have something special for them those who just want to go to the island pool and enjoy themselves we have something special for them so we have already made that change we have noticed it's a while coming now and it's already here now so it's what is happening as i said over the carnival season out of 50 trips i would say maybe five actually go over the reef to snorkel and when you get there if five people come off then you have plenty coming off so we now need to cater to the mm -hmm. what is that varying taste yeah, or we, demand yeah. uh, that's coming forward in terms of something a little different as you see more in terms of the entertainment line just to rock back relax yeah. and enjoy the, the you know um the, the the sea and sun i just want you to uh, remind for the benefit of let me say the few viewers or listeners who have not been on a tour just yet uh, where's usually your um pickup points or the pickup points you know for persons uh, belonging to generally um and generally the the, the estimated time for for a tour all right our pickup time uh 11 a.m 2 p.m and 5 p.m those are the three times that we actually operate and we operate mainly out of the bonacord lagoon jetty because of the safety of it um it's calm it's a jetty you don't have to get wet to go on board it's easy just to walk out board the vessel and we operate out of pigeon point as well on the jetty very rare we actually go to store bay now the reason being the water is constantly turning up and people get knocked over with the water People get their phone wet down. And to avoid that compli complication, we prefer to operate off the jetties, which is easier to get on and get off without any complications. Um, I just want to add something again to, concerning the reef. It's a very good thing that people is changing from wanting to go on the reef all the time because it helps with the development of the reef. Mm -hmm. The more people is above it and the more people is in it, it could cause more damages. The less people go in there is a is a win-win for us on our side. Because nobody's interfering with the corals, nobody's touching them, nobody's diving over and holding on to them. So if less people go there, actually it's a good. It just have helped the reef to grow even more than it is presently. Excellent. Are any other things you would want to share with us in closing? Well, I just want to say thank you for being here. Um, thanks Shana and Tobago for their support continually. And we appreciate you. You can all come over. Tobago is a good place to be. Not just about the boats and the sea, but general island. It's nice to just come and relax and lay back. All right. Thank you very much again, Michael Frankie, of viewers, owner and operator of Frankie's Tours. And if you know it any at all, this is the man that certainly has hosted many uh, from the world far and wide, stars and persons coming in. You must get in at all uh, with Frankie uh, in the mix. Certainly an experience, I must say. It's never just a tour, even from being here uh, with my groups and organizations and heading out onto the reef. It's always an experience uh, with Frankie. So and I encourage you, if you haven't taken uh, that trip just yet and you're right here in Tobago, or in fact planning to visit make sure that you book and ensure that you get that as part of your uh, experience here on the island and in Tobago and we welcome you certainly to visit we also want to thank each and every one of you once again for tuning in to the Tobago Updates morning show and as we prepare to head on out to a break we want to remind you that this is your opportunity to share the live share the live share the live we'll be right back <laughs>